saw this video by Danny Diamond about how he reduces the effect of bags under a person's eyes. And it got me kind of curious because I haven't used the curves adjustment tool in quite a while. Um, like more than a year, guaranteed. Uh, so I decided to start playing around with the curves adjustment tool again after not having used it for so long and I found a really cool quick and easy technique to very quickly take an image with hotspot that has detail that is an important fact so if you look at my hotspot here we're quite zoomed in okay well apparently my laptop is gonna be choppy okay so you can see there is still quite a bit of detail in his forehead all right and all we want to do is get this color to more closely match the highlight on his cheek because the highlight on his cheek is a nice sort of caramel color the highlight on his forehead just looks like shine it doesn't look um it, it's not even it doesn't even really look like a specular highlight i mean even though it probably is it just looks like i don't know he was sweating a little bit and you know maybe the makeup kind of came off there i mean not that he was wearing makeup but you get the idea um so really quick tool i will get straight into it cool so the first thing you need to do is create a merged copy of this now if you've got if you're doing this underneath other layers you want to uh switch off the layers that are above it in the case of this example i've kind of already done quite a bit of editing so i'm just going to demonstrate how to do it so i'm going to press Control alt shift n Control alt shift e okay computer's just thinking and what this does is it just merges all my layers together to give us this layer then i'm going to come over here and select my rectangular marquee tool okay press m and we're going to select an area on his cheek that we like, you know, we like the color of that area. But now here's the thing about pixels. Every pixel in that little selection is going to be ever so slightly different to the pixel next to it. So if we try to select that color, we'll get a mishmash of different colors and it won't be accurate every single time. So what we want to do with that little marquee selected, go to filter, blur and select average. Okay. All that does is it says what is the average color information in that block okay that's it now this layer we don't need to worry about because it is going to be a throwaway layer this is purely for the calculations okay so we're now going to take a nice spot on his forehead I think that's a good spot and we're going to do the exact same thing go to filter blur and select average okay so now press command D to deselect. We've got a color here that's pretty much a solid color and a color here. You can see they're, they're completely different. You know, they're different tones, they're different brightnesses, everything, okay? So now that we've done that, we're gonna create a curves adjustment layer above it, okay? Now you can see we've got the layer mask selected. We can press B for the brush tool and then with the layer mask selected, press Control I. This inverts our layer mask just so that we can I, it's it feels a bit backwards but trust me it makes it a lot easier <laughs> so then we're just going to color in where we see the highlight and look I'm not being too particular or too careful about it um, you can if you want to but really it's not necessary for this technique that's the whole point okay with our curves adjustment layer selected this time all right we're going to go to this highlight eyedropper tool so if I leave my mouse there you can see it says sample in image to set white point. Press option to display something, something. Hold on. <laughs> ah, okay, let's do that again. Press option to display clipping preview. We don't need to worry about the tooltip, but what we do need to know is that this is specifically for the highlights. We're dealing with a hot spot, which is a highlight. You don't want to do, deal with the midtones. You don't want to deal with the black points. You want to specifically deal with the highlights. Okay, so we're going to double click there. And what we're going to do is, you can see that this tells you what it does, color pickup. I'm very sorry about the fan noise, it does pick up in recording. Uh, unfortunately, my poor little laptop does get quite warm, so sorry about that, guys. Okay, it creates like a weird static sound. Anyway, okay, so what we do is when we hover over our picture, you see we get this little uh, color picker icon, okay? 
So we're going to pick the target. So we want this area to look like this area. We're going to go here and pick this target. Now look, anywhere in this area, it's the same color. But the minute I step outside this area, you see like as I move my brush, or my color picker rather, it gives me all sorts of colors. That's not very helpful to us. This is super helpful. Okay, so this is the average. Press OK. Save the new target colors as defaults. Click No. I'm not too sure what the defaults thing does. So again, when I've played with that and had a chance to deal with it when I'm done with client work, I'll let you guys know. So I'm just going to say No for that. And now we've still got our color picker selected. So now we're going to go into this highlight area. But again, if I select anywhere here, it's just going to be a mishmash. I mean, if you look, oh goodness, I can't, I can't do that. And okay, well, if you look here, so look in the color thing. As I select around, it's just, a, it's, it's a mess. Okay. So what we want to do, let's just undo, undo. Okay. So I have selected this area and you see no matter where I go in that averaged area it's going to give me the same result if I go outside the average it suddenly gives me a different result okay so it doesn't matter where I go outside it's going to constantly give me a weird different result we're going inside the average okay and then all we're going to do is click in our mask Okay, not even. All right. Now, as you can see, we're, we're going over the edges, and there is a reason for that. You want your color change to blend seamlessly into the rest of the image. Okay. So in the curves layer, there's like a blank space next to where it says curves. You're going to double click in that space. Okay. Another way to do this is to, in that space, right click, right click, and somewhere, let's see if I remember where. I never do it this way. There we go. Blending options. Ha! Okay. <laughs> so there's two ways to get into this little dialog. And I'm just going to cancel because I'm a little bit too close and it means that I can't see what I'm doing. Alright. And let's do that again. Go back to blending options. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the blend if slider. So we're saying blend if and we're, we're looking at the grays, if the underlying color is lighter. So we don't want to blend it in the dark areas. Okay, so I'm just clicking and dragging until I see it start to come away from the edges. So if you look around these edges, as I drag, why does it keep doing this to me? Okay, there we go. As I drag, and as it starts coming off, I'm going to hold Alt and click and drag. Right, until I get it roughly where I'm happy with it. Okay. I think that's pretty good. And then I'm going to press OK. There's no real rocket science formula to this. Now we can hide that layer. In fact, we can delete it. We no longer need that layer. All right, so now what we've got, if I just zoom in here, is we can see that this pretty closely matches the cheek. In fact, it's maybe gone a little bit too dark. So we can adjust that. All right. Click on your curves adjustment layer and in your RGB slider you can just make it a little bit brighter to bring back just a smidge of that brightness and again this gives you quite a bit of control because you can bring back all of the brightness and make it really funky or you can just bring back a tiny tiny amount so that it's still definitely a highlight okay if I zoom in really really close to his skin we can see this is the before this is the after. And I can see there's, I'm getting a little bit of yellow there that I'm like, eh, it doesn't work too well for me. There's a little bit too much red. But what's great about this is if I click on a point, so I clicked on the red point and I just press my arrow keys. So I'm just holding down an arrow key. You can see how it changes, right? So all I'm doing is holding the arrow key again. Okay. I can tweak it in a very quick and easy way without... 
without worrying about trying to do it with a mouse or with a pen tablet. Okay, let's get a little bit of yellow maybe. Maybe get the blue back. Okay. Actually, I think I want more yellow. Yeah, so I preferred with slightly more yellow. And then all I'm going to do is click a vibrance adjustment layer, press Control Alt G to clip it. And then I'm just going to reduce the vibrance just a smidge so that the tone isn't too oversaturated compared to what's beneath it or compared to his cheek. So if I go before, after, before, after. We've very, very quickly easily reduced that highlight. And again, you can tweak it as needed. Like I can see, I think there might be just a smidge of not enough green. So it's just a bit more green and then a bit more blue. And just reduce this just a smidge. Oh, I whispered there. <laughs> and just reduce it just a tiny amount. All right. So, without removing the fact that it's a highlight, because that's not what you want to do. You don't want to destroy it that it's a highlight, okay? Let's look at the before and the after. So there you go, guys. Super quick, super easy. I mean, obviously, you can tweak it more um, as you need to. If you want to do it again or get a specific spot, you can totally do that. But this is a really quick and nice technique to get it done. Obviously, I went a bit slow just to explain it. Um, but yeah, I hope that this was helpful for you. In fact, I'm going to add a bit more yellow. Ha! See, perfectionist. It's a problem. Really, it is. <laughs> and then just reduce that vibrance a tiny amount. Oh, that is looking perfect. Okay. So there you go, guys. Quick and simple technique to reduce... Um, a hot spot and kind of keep it a highlight but reduce it without any sort of fancy brushwork or anything like that just using the tools in Photoshop available to you. I hope you guys learned something and I would love to see what you've done to your images so please post I don't know links to Facebook pictures or anything if you've used this technique. I would so totally love to hear from you guys. Um, if you have any comments, any suggestions, anything you'd like me to do a video on specifically, let me know. As it is, I'm kind of just making videos as things occur to me. Um, I have been using Photoshop for about four years now, so I've kind of forgotten what is useful to teach. I know that sounds terrible, but it's true. Um, so yeah, let me know, guys. I um, love you all. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful morning, evening, afternoon. Whatever time of the year it is, wherever you are, have a good one, guys, and I'll check you in the next one. Cheers.